Hello, it's Victor here from polebarn.biz. Welcome to the first of 12 video tutorials on how to build your own pole barn. The how to build your own pole barn tutorial series has been designed as a practical, step-by-step, hands-on guide for do-it-yourselfers, for planning and building your own pole barn. We've endeavored to include all the important points that a do-it-yourself builder needs to consider to successfully construct their own quality barn, including easy to understand information about selecting the best building site for your barn, different barn styles to choose from, the best framing, siding, and roofing materials to use, through to a step-by-step -step construction details for a typical barn. This video format allows us to provide you with clear and useful visual reference information that will help you build like a barn construction professional. And even if you're not actually intending to build the barn hands-on, we hope that these tutorials will provide a useful reference to facilitate clear communication with your barn contractor. So let's get started by asking the obvious question, what exactly is a pole barn? A pole barn is a barn that is essentially a roof extended over a series of poles. They're generally rectangular in shape and do not require exterior walls. The roof is supported by the poles, which make up the outside barrier of the barn. Walls may be added to pole barns, but they're not required for structural integrity. Pole barns are very common in modern rural agricultural settings, often used for hay storage or livestock shelter, but also for other applications where large, low-cost, undercover spaces are needed that can be rapidly created, including residential garages, boat and truck storage and warehouses. The design of most pole barns is very simple. Poles make up the outer walls and support the roof system, which are usually pre-engineered wooden trusses with a metal roof sheathing. The poles are usually spaced eight feet apart with the trusses bearing directly on the poles. Some variations in design call for truss carrying beams between the posts with trusses sitting on them. The exterior walls consist of girts attached horizontally to the posts with the exterior metal sheathing attached to them. Exterior walls may be finished with corrugated metal or with plywood sheathing and vinyl siding. Roof materials are generally corrugated metal but may be finished with any typical roofing product. Depending on the function of the barn, there can be slight differences in style. For instance, a barn used for storing hay may lack any kind of lower exterior wall, whilst a pole barn used to house livestock would have some form of wall meeting up to the roof. But we're going to be discussing this in more detail in tutorial number three. The history of pole barns. Although there's certainly nothing new about the post frame method of construction, it's generally accepted that the term pole barn became popular in the United States in the 1930s depression era when using what were literally old telephone and power poles embedded in the ground and steel roofing and siding, the amount of framing, siding and foundation materials needed to construct a barn were dramatically reduced. After World War II, the poles were replaced with solid sawn posts, usually four by six inch or six by six inch. The posts were chemically treated to resist decay, which greatly increased the useful life of a building. In the 1950s and the 1960s, Metal plate connected wood trusses were developed, dramatically increasing roof spans, eventually up to around 100 feet, that's around about 30 metres. In the 1970s and 1980s, solid sawn posts were replaced with laminated 2x6 and 2x8 posts, allowing for much taller buildings. Since the 1980s, pole barns have been adapted for a variety of uses, including residential garages, retail stores, light commercial buildings, professional offices, and even homes. Whilst corrugated metal is still very common, other exteriors such as vinyl siding, stucco, and cement board are also used. The advantages and disadvantages of the pole construction method. There are several alternative methods of barn construction, so why use the pole barn type of construction method? One of the most common reasons to choose a pole barn is the much simplified foundation when compared to a conventionally framed building. Many pole barns utilize a bare earth floor and barns without a concrete floor are significantly less expensive to build. 
An inexpensive upgrade to a bare earth floor is to simply spread gravel or road-based material inside the finished barn and the poles will provide a convenient fixing point for adding perimeter retaining boards for any loose flooring material. Even if you decide to go with a wooden or concrete floor system, a pole barn can still be a good structural choice. In addition to the reduced site preparation, the amount of skilled construction labour necessary to build a pole barn is generally less than that of other construction methods. Other cost savings can come from using metal siding and roofing that's commonly used on pole barns today. Metal siding typically requires less installation labour and less material framing when compared to standard construction methods. Metal siding and roofing is also relatively high strength and is more durable than a composition roof and wood product siding. You can also expect less hail and wind damage with a metal roof. The disadvantages of the pole construction method. It's important to bear in mind that no solution is perfect for every application. And so there are some applications where pole construction would be a poor choice. Pole barns, although weather tight, do not lend themselves to being airtight. The complete sealing of metal corners, doors, window frames, roof eaves and bottom of walls can be a more difficult issue to resolve in pole barns than with standard building construction. So they don't lend themselves to heating and air conditioning systems. If you need to artificially control the climate inside your building, then a pole barn might not be the right choice for you. Lastly, another issue that pole barns can experience is if your local area has building restrictions for these types of barns, but you'll need to check that with your local authority. The next video in this series, video two of 12, will cover the tools, equipment, and skilled labor requirements that you'll need to build your own pole barn. So thanks for your time, and I look forward to seeing you at our next